Thank you, sirs. Fulfillment is defined as the satisfaction. Please write it down and if possible, underline the word satisfaction. Fulfillment is defined as the satisfaction derived from knowing the satisfaction derived from knowing that you lived your life effectively fulfillment is the satisfaction derived from knowing that you lived your life effectively serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity the fulfillment derived from knowing that you lived your life effectively comma serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity that is the definition of fulfillment I am fulfilled only to the degree to which I know that I have lived my life effectively I have transitioned across these stages of my life morning preparation afternoon execution evening legacy and consolidation and rest if I know that I have transitioned effectively using my life my wisdom my talents to first serve the purposes of the kingdom and then being a blessing to humanity with the gift and the grace God has given me the name given to that satisfaction is fulfillment let me tell you sincerely success in itself does not bring fulfillment there has to be satisfaction that money cannot buy there has to be a satisfaction that awards cannot buy i submit to you people of god by the grace and the privilege of god i look at my life today and with every sense of humility I can bow my knees to the God of my salvation and thank him and I can say I'm living my life effectively I wake up for a reason and I go back to bed for a reason I thank God for the privilege of transforming a generation I thank God for the privilege of revealing Jesus someday if Christ tarries we will not be here but we will live with honor and we will live with pride today a, my great mentor Miles Munro he's gone to be with the Lord but he's still alive in us Abel though dead yet speaketh this is a call for some of us it's a caution one more time for some of us it's an encouragement for some of us it's a drive to move forward with our lives so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom what is the wisdom there? To take cognizance of your days and the passage of time. That one day, we may not be here again if Christ tarries. We must begin to build systems and structures that will outlive us. This is more than just living real estate. Thank God for real estate. Thank God for all of these things. But the greatest legacy that you leave is the value system that enthrones Christ. A value system that produces responsible people. That is a legacy indeed. Many have left money. And when they transitioned and left, they left children and relatives who fought over that money, killed themselves. Many have left accolades. But the greatest legacy that you can leave the greatest legacy you can leave is not a will that shows that they should occupy your estate when you are not there it is a legacy of godliness the legacy of discipline inculcating values that become an extension to what you represent I round up with this this morning the Lord again in addition to our exploits is calling us that if our life is only if our hope is only in this life the Bible says we are of all men most miserable we have to begin to live number one with eternity in view but number two with succession in view are we together let our children 
be able to tell us tomorrow, thank God for daddy. That someday when we are out of the shores of this world, we can look at our children when we stand before Jesus and say the same way we celebrated ourselves. Don't be with your children at home and then when you are in heaven, you see them in hell and they say, Daddy, I would have come to Jesus if only you told me. You were busy around trying to look for money. It is my prayer that as I stand before him, I will not stand alone. That I will see a multitude of people who came to Jesus. And here's what they will tell you. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. It is time to think about our lives. Let us think about how we are living our lives right now. Ask yourself a question. The way I am going about my life, will my children be blessed? My final words for you in this session and this conference, live by three principles. Please write it down. Number one, the fear of the Lord. You want to do exploits in this kingdom, you must be governed by the fear of the Lord. It's called Yirat Adonai, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the spirit of reverence. The fear of the Lord. Number two, conscience. You must live by conscience. As you treat your children, as you treat your workers, as you treat your subordinates, conscience. Number three, a sense of posterity. You must live by these three factors if your life is to be efficient. Again, I repeat, number one, you must live by the fear of the Lord. Number two, you must live by conscience. Number three, you must live with a sense of posterity. The man you ignore today because he's poor and relegated to the background may be the man in old age who will help you and hold your hands the child you may be insulting today because he's not doing well in school may be that rejected stone that in old age will stand by you and remain with you is somebody ready to pray so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom please rise up on your feet For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord.